Hello, today we are looking at an Epson Powerlight 96W video projector. It came to me in this condition, no lamp, no cover, and on the back is a note that says bad projection. Whatever that means, I'm not sure, but today we'll find out. I do have a spare lamp that I will use for this, and there is an interlock underneath this cover right here, so I'll have to defeat that interlock for testing purposes. This projector came from a school. They have a, a number of these in service, and I maintain them for the school district, so I'm familiar with this model. I have a pretty good idea what the problem is going to be, but we'll dig into it and see if that's the case. First thing I'll do is we'll power it up, see what happens. This was ceiling mounted because I saw a ceiling mount bracket, which I removed just prior to shooting this video. So there's the interlock switch and when that's bypassed there's an orange standby light. We'll turn it on and see what happens. Okay, I'll focus this a bit. Already it looks like we are missing blue. There's no blue signal in that. Very, very little. It is reasonably bright this is not a darkened room because I have to have a light to see what I'm doing and light for the video. But all we have is a yellow image. That text should be white and it should be a blue background right now. I don't have a signal source out here to test it with. Well, let's take it apart, see what the problem is. To disassemble this projector, there are two screws in the top that we have to remove. There. These take a number two Phillips. For this job, we'll need both a number two and a number one Phillips. There it is. If the screwdriver is magnetic, it helps a little bit. And then on this back panel, hopefully you can see that, these silver screws have to come out. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, with those out, let's grab a hold of the panel at the top, lift it out. On the bottom, there are a number that need to come out. These are all still, I'll take a number two Phillips. So we're on the edge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's one in the middle. This one goes into a plastic stud that's pretty easy to break. If you break it, it's no big deal. It doesn't seem to affect the uh, assembly of the projector at all. This one isn't very tight, so I think we'll be all right. But if you just feel that screw spinning around inside, the stud's already broke. Not a big deal. Just leave it in there. Doesn't hurt a thing. I'll go around the edge and remove the rest of the screws. Once we've taken out the last screw, we'll hold it together, flip it over like this, and then this top shell comes off as one unit. But we have to be very careful because underneath this shell is a ribbon cable that goes to all these buttons and lights. So when we lift it off, first we'll open the filter door, then we'll lift off the top cover very carefully and tilt it toward the right like this because you can see underneath is this ribbon cable. Here's a close-up of that ribbon cable and connector. To release it, you pry out very gently on each side of that little brown tab. This one goes straight out this way and then you can see the cable pops right out. Some other tabs we'll have to look at the tab flips up so you have to make a note of which ones pull out straight and which ones flip up. Now we can see more of the inside of the, of the projector. The lamp sits in this cavity right here and the lamp shines this direction. It goes through a series of mirrors that we'll take a look at and it comes out the lens right here. A very dusty lens. Once we disassemble this, I'll take this out in the garage and very gently use compressed air and blow this dust out. When you use compressed air to, to blow dust out of these projectors, you'll also push a lot of dust into the optical path, but that's okay. We're going to clean the optical path anyways. The next step is to move this circuit board out of the way because we need to get to the optical path underneath. In this case, I'm pretty sure the problem is going to be mechanical and not electronic. There's not a problem with the board itself. 
For this though, we'll switch to a number one Phillips. And there are some screws we have to remove and some do not need to come out. This screw comes out. Like so. This one comes out. This one coming around here, this screw comes out. Now this plastic frame here can come out if you wish. It doesn't have to. It's a little easier if you do. So we'll take out two more. Now the screws we just took out all have machine threads because they go into a threaded hole in sheet metal. These two screws have to come out, but they have uh, plastic cutting threads. So just make a note of where these screws come from when you go to put it back together. So those two go into plastic, and this frame rotates out of the way. Now that's all the screws I have to worry about on the top, but this board and this board are connected. So we also have some screws on the face here. And this one, again, make note of where these screws come from because they are slightly different. There is one screw right here, and that is another small machine screw. That comes out. There is a screw right here that goes through a ring terminal into plastic. So that's a plastic screw, which I just dropped. There we go. And there's one last screw that takes a number two Phillips, and it's this one right here. That's also a machine screw, but it's different than all the rest. So again, keep that separate, make note of that. Then all these wires on the board on both sides here, and these ribbon cables all have to come out. Now these have a gray tab or a brown tab that you flip up and then that slides out like so. Give it a push out of the way. These go to the individual LCDs that produce the image on screen. Flip up, slide out, push them out of the way. Now on the side of the board, these terminals have to come out. You do want to be as gentle as possible removing these. It looks like a putting a lot of force on those. I am putting a fair amount, but I'm still using as little as possible because you can pull the wires right out of the connectors. And there's one more hidden one right here on the side. So those wires all move out of the way. This one will come out of the way. This wire stays. These wires can be removed if you wish, but they don't have to. This comes out like so. And then on this side of the board, there's two up here we'll get to in a moment, but first we'll pull these. Like that. And then if we gently lift the board a little bit, it's easier to get to these two here. Other thing is, you want to make sure you know where these go back. If they're different sizes, then it's pretty obvious where they go. Like a bigger connector won't fit in a, in a smaller socket, for instance. But some of these connectors are the same size. So it's important to just kind of keep an eye on where these wires came from so you know where to put them back. I've taken so many of these apart, I could put them back in my sleep. But if this is the first time you're disassembling this, just keep that in mind. And there are two right here that are also interchangeable, so watch those two. But at this point, we've removed all the wires that are in the way all the screws, and we just rotate this out of the way, like this. At this point, I'm going to take this out into the garage, blow the dust out of it, and be right back. Projector has been cleaned, and now let's dig into the optical path and see what the problem is. For this, we'll stay with our number one Phillips, and we're going to remove this black plastic cover, and it will review, reveal a set of mirrors and lenses. First, we have to get this cable out of the way. Just slides out, 
And then you have to work it out of this because that is a little uh, hook in the cover of the optical path. Then we'll remove the screws. Keep these screws separate. These will all be screws for plastic. They don't have machine threads. One there, one here. One back here. You can't quite see it, but it's right in here. And one right here. Then this top cover slides off. There's a wire here that we'll need to pull out, and it slides off like so. I'll grab a flashlight and I'll show you what happens in the optical path. Instead of using the projector lamp for testing, I'm going to use this little LED mag light. This is a warm white LED solitaire mag light. And I love this warm white light. It is much easier to use than the typical cool or bluish colored LEDs that are in so many flashlights. So I highly recommend you check out these warm white mag lights. No affiliation with mag light, I'm just a fan of their products. I'll turn the lights off on the workbench so we can better see what's going on in the optical path. There's a shutter that's closed right now inside of here, but some light still gets through. So even though I'm shining in white light, it's being split into its component colors of blue, green, and red back here. It goes through a series of lenses right here, and this first mirror reflects only the blue light and reflects it off this direction. The rest of the light passes through this lens where it hits this mirror. And this mirror reflects only the green light in this direction, leaving the red to pass straight through. The red goes through these lenses here, hits this mirror through this lens and through the red LCD. We noticed on screen that we didn't have any blue. So the blue light comes through here, hits this mirror, goes through this lens, hits a mirror here, and goes to the LCD. But for some reason, this mirror always comes unglued. I've repaired at least a dozen of these projectors, the same model, where this mirror has come detached from where it mounts, right here. I'll turn the lights back on. We'll take a closer look at the optics. So with the lights on, you can see where this mirror was attached back here with some glue to a plastic mounting post that is then glued into place in the projector. Here's a close-up of the mirror that we're working on. Just for clarity, I'll remove this lens so you can see the mirror. I'm just using a soft, lint-free cloth to handle the optics. Everything in the optical path is actually very clean. I've seen some of these where these mirrors and lenses are just caked with dust, and yet they still produce a pretty good picture even being incredibly dirty. But I'll set that lens aside. And now you can see where the mirror mounts. For re to reattach the mirror, I'm using some of this Elmer's china and glass cement. Hopefully that's on screen. That I bought at the hardware store. This may not be the best stuff, but so far, like I say, a dozen of these. I haven't had a single one come back yet. It's worked pretty well. I just, uh, I don't even bother cleaning off the old glue. Uh, maybe that's a good idea, but so far, like I say, I haven't had any comebacks. I'll just put a dollop in the middle like so. That's all you need. And then I'll take this and set it back in place. There is like a little ridge that it sits on down in the bottom. I probably can't quite show you on camera, but when you take a look at one of these yourself, there's a little shoulder that it sits on at the bottom. And then I take my finger and I just kind of rock it back and forth to make sure that it is sitting flat on the spot where it was originally glued. Because th this is a pretty precise adjustment, but as long as you get the mirror back where it was originally, I haven't found any need to readjust it. There we go. We'll let that sit until the glue dries. When we come back, 
I'll wipe off my fingerprints with the same cloth. We'll check out some other, we'll check out the rest of the optical path and make sure it's clean and reassemble it. Should be all it takes. Several hours have passed and the glue is dry. We can reassemble the projector. First, I'll just make sure that any fingerprints I might have left are gone. And it looks very good. If there was any dust on these lenses or these mirrors, I would use the same cloth to clean them. Some of these lenses can be lifted straight out. In fact, we have this one lens that we took out earlier, which we need to reinstall. If you take these lenses or mirrors out, be very careful that you know exactly how they go back in because it's not always easy to tell how they uh, should be reassembled. But the rest of these optical optics look clean and so I'm not going to touch them. Uh, it's better to not clean them if you don't have to. Also, you can peek in to the LCDs themselves right below the, these ribbon cables and check for any kind of dust or debris and they look clean, so again, I'm not going to touch them. But this Cameo swab is a good tool to clean those if cleaning was warranted. Now we'll take this top piece that we took off earlier. Again, double check that all the lenses and mirrors are in place. There is a filter that has to go in a particular groove, and so if this doesn't line up quite right, don't force it. But there it is. There's just a little bit of spring tension pushing up on this cover, just a little bit, but if there's any more, then something is out of place. We'll go back to using our number one Phillips. Quick note on screwdrivers, I've used number one and number two Phillips terminology quite a bit in this video. That just refers to the size of the tip. So the larger the number, the larger the tip. The screwdriver on the bottom here is a number one, the one on top here is a number two. And those are the two sizes that we use on this project. Again, taking the screws that have the threads for plastic, just reinstall the screws that we removed earlier. Now that we've installed all the screws and reinstalled that top plate, there's one little detail that we need to take care of down here, and that's this cable. These wires first hook into that top cover that we just reinstalled. And you kind of have to put them in one at a time almost. So they hook into the top, and then come over here, grab a quick flashlight. So they're attached in the top and they come over here and they hook underneath this first tab. This probably isn't critical, but that's the way we found it. That's the way I will reinstall it. It's not an exact science, but it's like that. The wire is reinstalled underneath that tab. Now we are ready to reinstall the circuit board. So with a circuit board, there are a few things we have to be careful of when we reinstall. First is to make sure that all these wires are out of the way and yet accessible. I'm going to take it and we have to watch right down here that this metal tab is on the outside of the circuit board assembly. We also have to watch right in here, there's that ring terminal, which I'll lift up. The ring terminal has to go on top of this metal, and these wires go behind that little hook. As I reinstall the circuit board, I need to make sure that none of the wires, like this one or these, get stuck underneath the board, and we have to reconnect a few that are hard to get to. First is these two. There's this little guy and this black wire. This wire going to a little, I'm not sure if that's a temperature sensor or what I think it is, goes on the bottom side connector, and then this, which goes down to a sensor in that top 
lid of the optics goes right there to the connector on top of the board. So those two are hard to get to. The next critical connectors are these ribbon cables right here for the different LCDs. If you reach underneath the board, you can take your finger and push them up and grab them like so. So I usually grab this one first. This is the green. F make sure the little tab is flipped up. And then you slide this. I realize my hand is in the way. <clears throat> Try to get this in the screen, on screen. Slide the little white tab in like so. And make a note of how much white is sticking out. That's where it should land. Then you just fold that brown tab back down and it locks the connector. Same thing with the red and the blue. Get my little finger underneath here and with a little bit of difficulty I can work that up. On this one the white is on the bottom of the ribbon cable. It's no big deal. Slide it in, lock it. And the blue is the last one and also the easiest to get to. Lock it. If you reassemble this and have any problems with the picture, come back and double check these connections. Now I'll make sure again that the wires we need to get to are accessible. And we can start reconnecting the rest of these wires. This cable goes over to the USB connector. That connects to a socket on the bottom side of the board. The rest of these go to connectors on the top. And you can kind of see based on where the wires land as to where they need to be reconnected. Because they take a set from being in here for a few years. And so if you can uh, listen to the wires and they'll tell you where they need to go. forget this one like that and we have these over here and make sure they're tucked in like so Double check all of the connections and make sure the connectors are fully seated. Looks like they are. I'm going to put a, just a couple of screws in this board to hold it in place. This takes a number one Phillips machine screw. Just briefly, I'll go over threads again. These screws with the very fine pitch threads, the threads are spaced very close together, are known as machine screws. Whereas some of these screws have threads that are spaced much further apart. Those are often called sheet metal screws, or in this case, because they go into plastic, I'm calling those plastic screws. Another machine screw in this corner. one right here. So you notice I did not have to take all of these machine screws out, just the few that I showed earlier in the video. If you take out more than that, it's just not necessary. Now we have this black piece to install, and it goes like this. There is uh, some routing here for these cords to fit into. So I'll just pull the cords out of the way, set this in place. There are two screws right here and right here. Those are plastic screws. And then there is a machine screw that goes right here. This plastic has to sit on top of this metal flashing just right. And this looks good. 
but make sure that that metal piece is sitting flat. If not, you can adjust this flashing back and forth by hand until this metal or this plastic trim piece sits properly. Now we have these wires to tuck into the hole. I personally like to tuck in the loose wires first. And then I will take the thicker wire and put that in on top. And there are little grooves for that thicker wire to fit into. So there's a groove there and then there's a groove back there. Make sure these are tucked out of the way. That looks good. If those wires stick up at all, they'll hold the top cover up and the top cover won't sit quite right. Not a big deal if they put a little pressure on the top cover, but it's nice to have these tucked out of the way. We are ready to reinstall the top cover. Let me zoom out and we will basically reverse the process that we used to disassemble the top cover. This is a good time too to take a look at the screws that are left over because I forgot one. Actually, I forgot at least one. I forgot uh, three. We have this funny little screw here. It's a machine screw. It takes a number two Phillips. We'll reinstall that. And then there is a machine screw right down here with that little metal tab that I mentioned earlier to make sure that metal tab is on the outside of the uh, metal part of the circuit board. That's a number one machine screw. That's a little bit hard to start. Now going back over here, we have this ring terminal that I mentioned earlier to make sure is on top. Well, grab a pair of pliers and pull it out. So that goes on top and make sure that these red and white wires aren't trapped underneath this part of the assembly. So that screw goes on top. This takes a screw that takes a number one Phillips and this has plastic threads. We'll go right through the ring terminal into the plastic. There we go. Done. Now we're ready to reinstall the top cover. Remember this ribbon cable earlier? This is what it looks like. So again, make sure that this little keeper is pulled straight out. In fact, I will zoom in so that you can see what I'm doing here. That guy right there. <clears throat> so this brown or black plastic is pulled straight out. Ribbon cable goes with the blue side up. It's helpful if you have a helper to hold the top cover while you're doing this so you can have two hands. And when you do it right, you won't see any blue exposed until you close that keeper. Once you close that keeper by pinching it tight, you'll see just a sliver of blue sticking out. Then the top cover just goes straight down. Doesn't matter what order the screws go back in at this point. You only have two types of screws left. You have these black screws. All these take a number two Phillips, but the black ones with plastic threads, you want to take two of those put those on top, flip it over, and then all around the edge plus the one in the middle. Once you finish those screws, you should have no black screws left. And you should just have five silver machine screws for this back panel. The back panel just uh, clips in and put the bottom in first then the top, and then just reinstall the screws that we removed earlier. And we'll make a quick scan around the workbench. If there, isn't any, if there aren't any parts that we forgot, any screws that are missing. Let's reinstall this lamp. Put some power to it. Defeat the interlock. turn it on. So 
already I can see I had the Epson logo up there a minute ago. There's focus. Even without a signal, I can already tell this is a much better picture. We have the blue background that we were missing earlier. We had our white text. I'll go into the menu. We can take a look at the menu and see that picture quality is pretty good. I don't have a signal source handy out here in the garage or I would put a picture through it. But I will guarantee that that picture will be just fine once this projector is placed back into service. The only thing that the school needs to do is install a lamp, find a lamp door cover, and install a filter. I notice the filter is missing. Otherwise, this projector is ready to be returned to service. Thanks for watching.